we got a spark plug out. It was really tight in there. And, you know, it actually looks pretty good. I don't know if this is original or not, but if it's iridium, then these last forever. So, we've got an empty hole. Let's uh, put in the pressure transducer. Uh, the other piece of information that uh, the shop owner here, Jim, tells me is that when this car came in, it was three quarts low on oil, and the capacity is like less than five. And for variable valve systems, that is a big no-no. That is not good at all. So again, um, we suspect the timing issue. The engine is quiet, so I wouldn't say that, you know the timing chain jumped or something, or the tensioner is loose, but seeing that we're that far advanced I don't know if the actual camshaft could have gotten stuck in the advanced position because act activating that solenoid doesn't do anything, it doesn't advance it, doesn't retard it so there's definitely something going on mechanically so but let's pop in the pressure transducer, crank it over see, uh, see what kind of waveform we get alright so new setup here we have this ignition coil unplugged and I'm just probed into the control wire for ignition coil number four. It is a dark green and white. So that should be a square wave, you know, probably a five or 12 volt. So that, that'll be kind of like our sink when the ignition is occurring on the cylinder. And then our pressure transducer <coughs> will see you know, live pressures inside the cylinder when we uh, start this thing up. So I guess all we need to do is crank it, start it, see what happens. So whenever you're ready, Jim, go for it. All right, shut her down. Very cool. Alright guys, this is really awesome. Look at that pressure waveform. So let's uh, get a zero line on here. Right there, there's zero pressure. Look at this. There's a little vacuum pocket right there. Then we have our compression event. And then a huge vacuum pocket. And then back to you know, zero. Hmm. Can we explain this waveform? So, for example, you know, hypothetically, what if our intake cam is way advanced? If a regular waveform would have, you know, on the intake stroke, you would see, you know, whatever the manifold pressure is, negative 20 inches of vacuum or whatever, and then right after that the intake valve closes, you would see our compression, up, down, back into vacuum, exhaust valve opens, boom. Right, so this looks, I guess, normal. Exhaust valve opens, uh, we can actually see what our pressure is at these uh, vacuum humps. And we have negative 14 psi, negative like 13. So that's very, actually, very high vacuum. This is this is psi. So minus 14 psi would be perfect vacuum. So that's interesting to note. Let's zoom in a little bit. Our peak pressures are, are right about, I don't know, like 60 PSI. Get another cursor in here. About 60 PSI. Now that seems kind of low, but again, just gathering data at this point. So this, this is what I don't like. Right here. Here is where the intake valve starts to open. And then, 
I can't explain this. You know, from here to here, why do we go come back to zero PSI? That's really bothering me right now. Um, let's see. We stretch it out a little bit. Get our zero line again. Close enough. Let's put in our cursors. So for this event, that is that is what? 720, right Jim? Yeah. Compression peak to compression peak? Yeah. So, so let's put it in a four, four segment to show all your that, open Absolutely. You already know how to use this thing. <laughs> yeah, I just don't have one. Like I said, I think I think they're for sale. For sale, <laughs> you, you can go online and AES Wave. Uh, that's where I got mine. So, yeah. not not to plug them or anything, but they do have good deals. Now let's see uh, rulers. Partition. We want to do how many partitions again? Four. Four partitions. So one, two, three, four. That shows you all your valves. Yep. It should. 120, 240, 360. Well, but but this is 720, right? 720. So check that out. You type that in, boom, all the other ones change. Now what? Actually, okay, I got I got too many cursors here. <laughs> Uh, we want four partitions. So rulers, partitions, four. There we go, 720. Look at that, zoom in, do whatever you want. Hide that guy. So let's get rid of some of these cursors. Now, okay, so what about our ignition timing? Is that occurring? Pretty much right before top dot center. Yes, it is, and probably because it's based off of the crankshaft position sensor, which you know didn't go anywhere. So that's that's just a good confirmation. So now valve timing. What what are we missing in this waveform? So right there, exhaust valve opens. Right, that looks spot on. This is the exhaust stroke. We start our intake stroke. So exhaust valve should be closed when we start our intake stroke. What about the intake valve? Is that opening? It should start opening for the intake stroke, absolutely. But right here is where things go wonky. We're back to atmospheric pressure. Again, let me re-zero this. Uh, that's close enough right there, 0 0.009. So our compression stroke is happening uh, you know there should be intake vacuum all the way to here I think and then our compression stroke happens and then we do go back into vacuum which is really bizarre we start atmospheric and then we go back in the vacuum. Can you explain that? Unless there's some massive cylinder leakage. Then this thing cranks funny. I mean, it does. It doesn't sound like it has any compression. I mean, we're hitting 50 psi right there on that peak. 50 to 60. That's that's a little, little low. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should pull up some known good compression waveforms just to see, you know, compare apples to apples here. But just a simple Google search. That is what a generic running compression waveform at idle should look like. Now there's your exhaust stroke, intake stroke, compression stroke, and then, uh, you know, power stroke right here. So right here in the intake stroke, we should be under vacuum until we start the compression stroke. But look at our waveform 
right there. It looks like we're on the right track, but what the heck happens right here? Why is this atmosphere? Obviously the valves are closed during our compression, because if they weren't, then we wouldn't have any pressure at all inside the cylinder. So, again, we need to figure, kind of make a hypothesis. What if our intake cam is advanced? What if our intake cam is retarded? Because we think the problem is with the intake cam, because that's what the computer doesn't like. And the exhaust stroke seems to be occurring at the right spot. So, we can, uh, you know, try to kind of make a make a guesstimate of what would happen if we're 50 degrees advanced or retarded or uh, you know one of those things so my hypothesis is our intake cam might be retarded so let's say exhaust valve closes here and the intake valve is really late to to open so our piston starts going down, it'll start pulling a vacuum, and right there the intake opens very late, and we come back to atmospheric. I think that there won't be much vacuum in this manifold, and here's how we're going to verify that hypothesis. I might be completely wrong on this, but let's just start it up and, and see what that gauge reads. Yeah, let me uh, plug in my transducer again, just a sec. All right, go for it. Or, I might be completely wrong. Our intake vacuum is like 30 inches. <laughs> so, my pressure transducer wasn't lying. That is what it is. All right, shut her down. That is crazy. I've never seen intake vacuum that high. 30 inches and it's it's stuck there? No. Okay, uh, we might have a variable. We don't know if this hose is just directly connected to the intake or if there is a one-way valve in there somewhere because this system is uh, kind of smart and funky and it has this like electrical connector on the brake booster so if we can find another vacuum source that's uh, more straightforward, like uh, you know where a map sensor hooks up or something, we'll, we'll take another look here. All right, take two. Now we have the vacuum gauge connected to, hopefully, just the vacuum source, and that was from our uh, evap, you know, purge valve right there. So, okay, start it up. To the vacuum. Aha! Yes! Basically zero. It's like maybe two inches of vacuum. Can you rev it up a little bit, Jim? Okay. Shut it down. Uh, start up again. See, that's at zero right now. Shut it down. We have no intake vacuum. That explains atmospheric pressure on the intake stroke. Absolutely. Okay, so we're on the right track. Okay, so we got a different vacuum gauge hooked up just for reference uh, to the same place. So let's see what it does. Yep. Fluttering. Yep, yep, yep. Give it a little gas. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't like it. All right, shut her down. So actually, on, on shutdown, our vacuum increased to like four, four inches, and then went back to zero. But when it's running, it was at zero. That is confirmed, and it matches our waveform. So that's you know two strikes. So this is turning out to be a really neat case study. So the one question remains is, uh, how far off are we? 
according to our pressure transducer, which is absolutely the right tool for this job. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would say we're at least 30 to 35 degrees off. Yeah. yeah, we have absolutely no... If it, was, if it was only 20 degrees off, we would have some intake manifold vacuum. It is... I'm surprised it's running. I re really am. I'm, um, I'm saying just by... Oh, <laughs> by me, it's yeah. at least 30 to 35 degrees off. Right. Um, and I, I'm totally with you, Jim. I want to do a mechanical compression test on this thing before we, uh, you know, leave it here. But what's really bugging me is how far off this intake cam is. Now, I'm saying it's retarded, and I'm saying that the valve should open here, and by this waveform, valves are closed, and right here where the pressure goes back up to atmospheric, to our intake manifold pressure, which is atmospheric, which it shouldn't be, but anyways, that gap between those two valves, the delta, is reading 65 degrees of crankshaft rotation. That's very key. 65 degrees of crankshaft rotation. And we're getting that from, you know, the two compression peaks. There's zero. There's 720. That's how delayed we are. All right? So 65 degrees. Remember that number. Now, looking at our cam crank correlation, let's see, right here. I called up Keith, he sent me supposedly known good waveform off of this 2.4 engine. And so the blue is the intake just like in our capture and the red is the exhaust. So that intake cam, that little uh, step should line up with the sink notch and our exhaust should be offset that way. Let's look at our waveform. Again, we have our cursors set up. So two crankshaft rotations from sink notch to two sink notches over 720. Okay. Now let's zoom in right here. So our intake should this bottom of this step right there should line up with our sink notch. But what we're seeing is the bottom of the step, it is delayed, but if we put in our cursors from here to here, it's only showing about 20 degrees. So, 65 degrees or 20 degrees? By how this thing runs, 20 degrees would actually be in the normal range of the, uh, you know, the camshaft, whatever, actuator. We're way off. I believe my pressure transducer. So again, we need a known good waveform for a 2010. This was off of a 2011. So again, some variables there. But to have no intake manifold vacuum to be running this poorly, uh, we'll do a compression check. I'm sure we're going to get like half of the spec, if that. Um, but by our cam crank correlation, we're only off 20 degrees. We are retarded on the intake. And the you know the exhaust seems to be seems to be in the right place. So th there's the intake and exhaust, and there's our intake and exhaust. Okay, so that's where we're at. Uh, we'll finish this off with a regular compression test, old school style, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see where where it goes. Um, so there's still that discrepancy, but we're definitely the timing is off on the intake. All right, so we installed the Schrader core inside our hose. So now we'll have cumulative pressure on our green trace. And we're starting at zero. So, and go for it. That's it, huh? That's all she wrote. It sounds very, very sick. <laughs> Check that out. We peaked at 62 PSI. Unbelievable. How is this thing running? It must be that direct injection technology, oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. So we have no intake manifold vacuum. We have a peak compression of 62 PSI. So the first, the first hump here was at 
36 and then and never build past 62. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll give benefit of the doubt, 65. We're guessing 100. That's crazy. So, yeah, I, I think our intake cam is off more than 20 degrees. So that's, uh, that's it for part one or part two, and uh, we might even show a little video of the repair. Uh, stay tuned. All right, see you guys in the next part. Bye-bye. So with, uh, here, here's another variable. We have the pressure transducer in there, right? So now we have everything plugged back in. And uh, we do have some intake manifold vacuum. It's about seven pounds. Again, very low, but, you know, more than zero. So, cutting out a cylinder definitely uh, changed our vacuum. So, that, that's, you know, you got to watch out for that. You know, rev it up a little bit, Joe, and see what happens here on the gauge. Right there, idle at seven. Well, we did hit 15 on the D cell. Um, right now, it should be around 20 on a good engine. But obviously, our uh, our timing is messed up. You actually, you can hear the timing chain rattle. I think the tensioner is messed up. You hear it? Yeah, this engine needs to come apart. At least nothing's bent yet.